good evening to all and welcome to the session this session is all about an insight into sa course for civil services exam in this session i'm going to talk about the course in detail last time if you remember i said this course is for 50 days the first 25 days related to the tools when it comes to essay writing and the last 25 days deal with specific topics and the feedback in this session i'm going to talk about the first 25 lessons what am i going to teach lesson one introduction to ss for ups civil services mains exam this is all about the introduction in the ups civil services mains exam we all know essay writing is a crucial component that test candidates ability to articulate their thoughts on a wide range of topics not only that we all know essay paper is for 250 marks the essay carries significant weightage that's what i have just said if you take an optional 500 marks and if you take the essay paper 50 percent of that 250 marks significant weightage and candidates are expected to demonstrate their analytical critical thinking and communication skills through this exercise all these are very important but at the outset you should have information that is important lesson number two any competitive exam especially civil services any exam topic or a particular paper you have to ask the question what is tested why do they ask you to write an essay and what is tested in essays for ups civil services mains exam assess in the ups exam assess candidates ability to synthesize information analyze complex issues present logical arguments and communicate effectively that is very important examiners look for candidates who can provide insightful perspectives this is something very important insightful insight means deep understanding insightful perspectives coherent reasoning coherence goes with writing unity coherence we also i also give the meaning a uh, smooth and logical flow of sentences or ideas coherent reasoning and well supported opinions on diverse subjects whatever you say or whatever you write you have to substantiate all these things are tested coming to types of essays lesson three and lesson four deal with uh, types of essays these are only as an example i'm giving but usually upsc they deal with uh, philosophical essays as well types of essays for upsc civil services mains exam understanding the types of essays is essential for success in the upsc exam generally speaking i would like to reiterate generally speaking we have descriptive essays then comes a question what are descriptive essays descriptive essays for upsc civil services mains exam these require candidates to vividly describe a person place or event in the upsc context this could involve describing a historical monument a significant social issue or a cultural event social issues very important narrative essays for upsc civil services mains exam what do they demand narrative essays demand storytelling skills allowing candidates to narrate personal experiences or historical events this can be used effectively to shed light on societal or, or cultural shifts. But generally, you don't have to we don't expect a narrative essays. Expository essays, what do they mean? Expository essays assess candidates' ability to explain complex concepts or phenomena, which is not easy. This is particularly useful when discussing scientific advancements, economic policies, or technological changes and the fourth one persuasive essays persuade to convince someone to do something persuasive essays gauge the candidates capacity or ability to convince readers of their viewpoint this skill is vital while for discussing policy changes 
societal reforms or ethical dilemmas. These are the types of essays. As I'm, I would like to reiterate, sample, but uh, UPSC point of view, I may uh, discuss other types of essays in detail. Lesson five, a few lessons deal with. Generally, when it comes to essay writing or any essay for that matter, three things are required. At the outset, information. You can also use the word info. It's a separate word, not the short form of information. Any civil services aspirant, IAS aspirant, there's no dearth of information. He or she has a lot of information. Then comes language. Here when we say facts and figures, that is very important. Information, what do I mean by that? Facts. You have to present authentic information. Then comes language. For information, a prerequisite. But how do you express your ideas, your views, based on the question? Language comes into picture. Here, you got to be good at grammar so that you don't make grammatical errors. Then you got to be good at vocabulary so that you can use effective words. And you have to focus always on coherence. Coherence means what? Smooth and logical flow of sentences. You do that with link words. Basic grammar in lesson five, I'm going to teach basic grammar, important topics like uh, parts of speech, exam point of view, whatever is relevant, tenses, active voice, passive voice, direct, indirect, and also these are basic. Higher level when it comes to sentence structure, meticulous sentence construction is crucial for clarity in UPSC essays. For that, you need mastery over subject verb agreement, sentence fragments, phrases and clauses, and varied sentence types enhances communication. If you take English language, we have about 8 lakh words. Of these 8 lakh words, 5 lakh words are general, and uh, 5 lakh words are general, 3 lakh words are technical. 5 plus 3, 8 lakh words. And when it comes to, you'll be surprised to know, a typical English man or woman knows only 20,000 words. Typical, average. An intellectual knows about 40,000. On the higher side, 50,000 words. That means they themselves don't know about 750,000 words. But exam point of view, when you read a particular topic, Indirectly, you acquire the words. Vocabulary, not a big deal. You may remember many words, but what matters, how you use those words in a sentence. Then you have to know something about, English language has about 350 sentence patterns. And the basic pattern is uh, subject, verb, object, SVO pattern. But when you use this pattern, you cannot give a lot of information. Usually writers, to provide more information, they use after the subject, the phrases and clauses. After the object, the phrases and clauses. So sentence fragments. And also different patterns. Always you use the same pattern. It does not look or it does not sound interesting. Varied sentence types enhances communication. For that, you got to know a few important sentence patterns. Lesson six also deals with grammar. But here, focus is more on basic grammar, punctuation, and mechanics for UPSC civil services mains exam. Punctuation nuances, subtle differences like commas, semicolons, hyphens, uh, aid in conveying precise meanings. A wrong place, a wrong punctuation changes the meaning of the sentence. Proper paragraph indentation and formatting ensure a great or neat presentation. Lesson number seven, very important. If you take English language, when it comes to speaking or writing, explicitly or implicitly, grammar plays a crucial role. When it comes to grammar, 
we have grammar rules and this plays a vital role when it comes to writing usually i teach about 200 grammar rules 200 grammar rules then you may wonder do we have to learn 200 grammar rules if you want to become an ias officer once you get the selection or a government civil servant once you get the selection obviously people expect you to speak and write flawless english flawless means what without any mistakes you have to speak and write flawless english for that these 200 grammar rules you need to learn but don't get intimidated by the number of these 200 grammar rules about 150 rules are easy you listen once you can remember and 50 grammar rules you got to spend time this is what i usually teach but civil's point of view you don't have to learn all the 200 grammar rules i'm going to teach the rules that go with uh, written english then the number may come down drastically adhering to rules of conciseness briefness avoiding ambiguity vagueness and maintaining a formal tone aligned with the expectations of UPSC essay evaluation. Students ask, sir, do we have to use grammatically correct sentences? What is important? Information or grammar? Do remember, information is a prerequisite. This information also based on the question. What is the question? What are the keywords in the question? And based on the keywords, how to write the answer? The, how to present the information the most important it's a prerequisite but imagine you have a lot of information you have understood the question you got the keywords but you don't you're not good at language because english is not your mother tongue and we are not born writers then it becomes a problem to put all your ideas on paper for that you need uh, proficiency in english I, when it comes to written english that is very important their grammar plays a role you can express your views based on your vast knowledge on a variety of topics but when you write the essay without errors we write uh, grammatically correct sentences appropriate words word combinations link words and no errors as such obviously you get more marks it goes without saying lesson eight also related to grammar in a way common errors to avoid for upsc civil services mains exam essay point of view errors such as faulty parallelism improper tense usage and misplaced modifiers can be detrimental means what dangerous being mindful of these can elevate the quality of your essays what is parallelism it is an important sentence pattern look at this example the more you spend, the less you have. What is a parallel expression here? The more, the less. That is what we call parallel expression. Parallel expression means using the same word forms, same grammatical units in the sentence. I will give a better example. Honesty integrity and being diligent let me use a capital letter here because i've used honesty integrity and being diligent are important for success this sentence is wrong. Why is it wrong? Honesty is a noun. Integrity is a noun. Then the third one also should be a noun. But here you have verb ing form, auxiliary or helping verb. And diligent person, diligent is an adjective. Then it is not correct. What are you supposed to say? Honesty, integrity and diligence. Hardworking nature, meticulous nature honesty integrity and diligence are important for success this is what precisely we call parallel expression and other examples like uh, she likes uh, reading and to write wrong she likes reading and writing 
Improper tense usage, that also matters a lot. When it comes to tenses, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes, not acceptable. The mistakes may go with the written English or conversational English. Exam point of view, higher level, I would like to give an example. I have met the director yesterday. A lot of people make a sentence like this. I have met the director yesterday. This sentence is wrong. It goes with tenses. Here we have the word yesterday and it goes into the past. Then we cannot use present perfect tense. This is in present perfect. It's a wrong combination. Present perfect plus past time, independent past time, wrong combination. Here, because yesterday is there, we have to say, we should use past tense. I met the director yesterday. Then it is correct. Lesson number nine is very important. Link words and transition for UPSC civil services mains exam. That is essay. Transition words enhance coherence. What is writing? Writing is all about coherence. Then you may wonder, what is this coherence? It is nothing but smooth and logical flow of sentences. When you write, your sentences should flow smoothly and logically. Then we use the term coherence. Usually what happens, students write uh, points. Writing points is not a writing skill. Anyone can do that. Essay means what? Coherence is the most important thing. Then how do you express coherence in your essay with the help of link words? I'll give an example. Here, when we talk about the development of Hyderabad, we say Hyderabad is growing by leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds means rapidly. This is one idea. This is something positive. Then you want to introduce a negative idea. Then you have to use a link word. However, however, the development or the growth, the development is lopsided. Lopsided means what? Uneven. Hyderabad is developing by leaps and bounds, growing by leaps and bounds. However, the development or the growth is lopsided. If you don't use the word however, then it is not writing. Then if you ask the question, what is this however, it is a link word. We have to use a lot of link words based on what you're trying to connect. And that shows you're good at writing, you're good at coherence. Only then it is considered a proper essay. Without link words, it is not an essay in the real sense. And uh, one more thing uh, uh, between coherence, between paragraphs and ideas and continuity, very important, smooth and logical flow of sentences. Coming to lesson 10. If you take uh, a language, there are three things which are very important. One is the foundation grammar. Second is uh, vocabulary. Grammar more or less deals with uh, sentences. Vocabulary deals with words. But besides these two, we have the third dimension, a reading comprehension skill. All the three are very important to master a particular language. Coming to writing skill, essay writing, First two are important. Reading comprehension skill goes with a reading to some extent the question and getting the keywords and based on that writing your essay. Here it's all about introduction to vocabulary, enhancement for UPSC civil services essay writing. A rich vocabulary allows nuanced expression. Nuances means subtle differences. Imagine you can use a phrasal verb like speed up a simple word like accelerate 
but you can also use a better word like expedite. They all mean the same. Accelerate, speed up, expedite, which is a better expression, expeditious, expedite. This is what they expect and it fetches better marks. And precise word choice can distinguish your writing and demonstrate sophistication. That is very important. Usually when you write an essay, imagine you're writing about the problems, the hardships, and you want to use a word, government is doing something to reduce the intensity of the problems or the hardships. We have to use a reduce a simple word. We have to use words like mitigate, alleviate, assuage. These are better words, appropriate words. Mitigate something, alleviate something, assuage something. Words, right word at the right time, right word at the right place, makes all the difference when it comes to essay writing. And lesson 11, many IAS aspirants, civil services aspirants, are good at lexical terms, in my opinion. Lexical terms and word combinations for UPS and civil services Effective manipulation of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs strengthens your writing. Employing idiomatic phrases and collocations adds depth. Here, parts of speech, four parts of speech are very important when it comes to either speaking or writing. And these are known as, if you take all the eight lakh words, they're divided into two groups, structural words. Words with a function, they are not that important. And what comes under structural words? We have pronouns in a way. We have prepositions. We have uh, conjunctions. And the last one, we have interjections. When it comes to a rich vocabulary, you got to be good at the second group. What is the second group? Content words. Means words with a meaning. All the eight lakh words are nothing but eight parts of speech. And what are the four parts of speech that, that come under second group? And you should always focus on these four. Nouns, verbs, adjectives. The last one is rather easy, adverbs. How to use them, and you should know the word forms. If you take a simple word like silence, silence can be a noun, silence can be a verb. Silent is the adjective form. Silently is the adverbial form. And you have to know all these. Coming to lexical terms, imagine you have read an article related to environment, loss of habitat. Generally, what are the words go with uh, that particular topic? If you take habitat, then you can think of words. I always teach uh, word maps and mind maps with the help of word maps and mind maps. Here, when you talk about uh, uh, species, loss of habitat, Related words I'm talking about. Why loss of habitat? Deforestation. Deforestation, habit, loss of habitat. And because of that, you have to think of re related words like endangered, extinct. And you have to think of words like, I'm sure you all know these words as aspirants, conservation, and uh, preservation. Preservation has many meanings. Then you have to think, use words like flora and fauna, animals of a particular region, plants of a particular region. And uh, all these words are what we call lexical terms. When you have a topic in English, the topic has some basic words which go with the topic, and those are known as lexical terms. In my opinion, many IAs aspirants or civil servants aspirants, they are good at lexical terms and word combinations because they acquire a lot of knowledge. Along with the knowledge, they get the terms. But uh, it is always better if you focus on lexical terms and word combinations. 
and spend some time so that you use the right word at the right time in the right place lesson 12 continuation lexical terms and word combinations are very important for example you want to use uh, the word extinction extinction of you can use uh, a few words like species extinction of a particular genus extinction of a particular uh, animal or flora extinction of fauna of a region these are the combinations english is known as a combinational language and you have to use the right combinations it makes all the difference when it comes to your writing skill or speaking skill lesson 13 important and power words for upsc essay writing strategic use of impactful words casual words impactful words elevates your essays this can demonstrate your understanding of complex topics and engage the examiner when the examiner reads your essay he or she he or she should be impressed based on the information you present how you present and based on the words you use that makes all the difference lesson 14 also important words and power words i'm going to deal with and uh, lesson 15 confusing words very important i will i would like to give a few examples advice advice grammar based confusing the last four letters v i c e this is a verb and v i c e this is a noun if you don't use a correct word form it makes a lot of difference another typical example as uh, students quite often you buy pens papers notebooks for that the spelling is n e r y a lot of students get bit, get confused between n e r y n a r y n e r y means paper books pencils office needs or school needs all these and stationary object means what no movement without any movement we also use a word static static you got to be very careful i'm going to give important words list of words and in, if you take english lesson 16 deals with what i call effective english idioms phrases and proverbs these make all the difference today if you go to the us or the uk their mother tongue is english they all speak english but some people get respect others say they speak very good english they speak effective english then comes a question what comes under effective english and those who use effective english get a lot of respect two topics come under effective english one is idioms the other one phrasal verbs in your essay if you use appropriate idioms appropriate phrasal verbs it shows that you are very good at english that also makes a positive impact here if you take a simple a popular idiom imagine uh, something happens very rarely happen very rarely easy to understand but there's one idiomatic expression once in a blue moon once in a blue moon means same thing happen very rarely and a phrasal verb a particular system stopped working then you can say the use of phrasal verb breakdown breakdown of a system breakdown goes with vehicles systems machinery it also goes with power effective english very important now i talked about grammar part initially introduction what is tested and types of essays then i touched the language language grammar and vocabulary now when you read an essay how to answer all of you do remember upsc or any competitive exam when they ask you to write an essay it is not about what you know generally it is about what they want you to write based on the question that makes a lot of difference what you know is one thing what you're supposed to write is another thing 
imagine you know something about ai artificial intelligence but the question is about the impact of ai negative impact of they gave once in civil services i think 2020 impact of ai on employment then the dimension changes first and foremost when you read a question essay question you have to focus on key words important words in the question and based on those they act as a prompts based on those questions you have to go in for the brainstorming session interpreting upsc essay prompts or the key words in the question requires keen attention to key terms grasping their implications is vital for addressing the topic accurately usually what happens when you're under pressure you read the question already you have a lot of information and you try to present that information generally not from the question point of view but first and foremost when you read the question you have to focus on key words based on the key words you have to go in for the brainstorming session lesson 18 is about brainstorming and essay structure what is this brainstorming when you understand the key words in the question i've just said you have to go for brainstorming session based on the keywords based on your grasp think of whatever ideas pop up don't try to stop let as many ideas allow ideas to come make a note then based on the question whatever is relevant you keep whatever is not relevant you delete then you have about uh, let's say 10 points based on the question i would like to reiterate and these 10 points again you group them three points go with one group and three points go with the another group and four points uh, go with uh, uh, another group so three groups each group you have to develop into a paragraph then you get uh, based on after getting the structure you have to think of the introduction and the conclusion first you have to go in for the brainstorming session and you have to get the structure based on the question based on the keywords lesson 19 deals with crafting effective paragraphs for upsc master the art of constructing well organized paragraphs with strong topic sentences supporting evidence and seamless transitions if you take a paragraph in english what is the basic structure every paragraph has the topic sentence means what every paragraph has a has a main idea the sentence with the main idea is called topic sentence and this of topic sentence or the sentence with the main idea has to be supported substantiated for that every paragraph has begins with the topic sentence it has supporting sentences four or five five or six and uh, when you support uh, present the supporting sentences again you have to uh, think of seamless transitions for that you have to use the link words and uh, every paragraph begins with the topic sentence and ends with the concluding sentence this is a basic format that goes with a paragraph in english topic sentence or the sentence with the main idea supporting sentences about four or five or five or six and the concluding sentence and once you present this way obviously it becomes a well organized paragraph and that results in writing an effective essay lesson 20 deals with scoring maximum marks in essays for upsc and aim for high scores there are two levels writing an essay level one writing an effective essay writing an essay level one writing an effective essay the actual thing you have to focus on when you write an effective essay obviously you get maximum marks that should be the objective aim for high scores by presenting balanced arguments referencing diverse viewpoints and substantiating claims with reliable sources when it comes to writing or speaking especially writing whatever you write you have to substantiate with valid uh, examples substantiate claims with reliable sources 
otherwise your statement has no meaning whenever you make a statement you have to substantiate how can you substantiate how should you substantiate with authentic information authentic examples claims with reliable sources this is something very important when you do that and also diverse viewpoints usually i tell students when you present a particular topic i have created one acronym what is the difference between an abbreviation and an acronym abbreviation you take the first two letters you pronounce every letter for example if i say bbc that is an abbreviation i have taken the first letters from british broadcasting corporation bbc what is an acronym we take the first two letters of different words and we form a word for example we all say scuba diving i don't know how many of you know that scuba is an acronym scuba have said as a word not s c u b a scuba means self contained underwater breathing apparatus as a, for civil services aspirants a better example would be n a t o we don't say we say nato north atlantic treaty organization that is an acronym so i have created an acronym what do the letters stand for what is acronym here sleeps when you write your essay to break the monotony usually writers those who are not good at writing they res- they depend on they resort to what we call redundancy unnecessary repetition of the same ideas redundancy how to beat this redundancy you have to resort to sleeps what do the letters stand for s for science and technology dimension l for legal dimension e for education another e for economy p for polity s for socio cultural problems imagine you have to write about elections elections then you can take uh, all these aspects can be touched if you take science and technology you can talk about electronic voting machines legal aspects you can talk about uh, negative shades like rigging booth capturing education to what extent the voters are aware of the value of the votes an economy how much amount or how much money is spent on conducting elections and uh, unofficially how much money distributed all those and polity here you could talk about the parties religious parties secular parties all these and socio cultural problems why people usually it's an open secret take money and vote what what could be the reasons behind when you present uh, write an essay touching all these aspects obviously you make the right impact and it becomes uh, what i call holistic in approach holistic means what comprehensive or exhaustive and there is no way you can lose the marks you get maximum marks lesson 20 deals with types of essays upsc point of view i have already talked about general essays descriptive narrative expository persuasive but upsc point of view higher level philosophical and based on economy based on socio cultural problems all these things for example societal concerns policy matters ethical dilemmas all these essays are going to be discussed lesson 22 deals with incorporating important quotes as say it's always better if you start with uh, appropriate quote and here i'll be talking about uh, important quotes based on the theme or the concept or the subject lesson 23 essay writing do's and don'ts very important i have already uh, there is a video if you search my channel there is one video related to do's and don'ts when it comes to essay writing uh, it is like the starting point with those uh, tips do's and don'ts you can start working on your essay writing guidelines such as maintaining objectivity avoiding bias adhering to word limits are critical for upsc essay writing and do's and don'ts practical tips lesson 24 deals with practice your skills discussion on previous year papers pyps for upsc essay writing engage in in depth discussions based on last year last 10 years papers and uh, you can gain insights how to write 
and what are the question words, how to consider, how to grasp. And based on that, uh, you can get an insight into the UPSC examiner's perspective and hone your writing skills, improve your writing skills. Lesson 25, course overview. I, I may touch the whole thing, 24 sessions, what exactly you gain and in which direction that will take you and uh, reviewing the whole thing or overview of the course and uh, gaps can be filled, feedback will be taken. Summarize your learning journey, reflect on your progress, outline strategies for ongoing improvement in essay writing. All these are going to be discussed. This is about the first uh, 25 days. Second 25 days, if you remember, I said this course is for 50 days. The most effective course and uh, in detail, you're going to get the information, whatever goes with uh, information from the question point of view and uh, grammar, language point of view, vocabulary point of view, common errors point of view, effective writing point of view. All these are going to be discussed and this should take you to the next level, level two. What is this level two? Here we practice important topics or burning topics, expected essays broadly. And uh, you have to write, submit. And uh, once you submit my app, I, last time I gave the link, you can upload the essay. I will go through, I'll give the feedback one-to-one, one-on-one. -one, one -on -one, and that will help improve your a writing skill. This is all about, and uh, coming to the course fee, the time slots, this is a second video related to essay course. Tomorrow or day after, I'll come up with another video. Based on the feedback I'm going to get, uh, a lot of students will watch this, and they will give me the feedback. Based on that, I'll come up with uh, one video, do's and don'ts, that is a good beginning good way to start. I will talk about the course fee and other details or time slots. Thank you very much. All the best.